is your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. Yes, it is. And nobody can deny that people love him at one point or another. It's just a matter of which version of Spider-Man you love. In this list, we'll be looking at the top 10 Spider-Man scenes, whether it's from the movie starring Tobey Maguire or Andrew Garfield, to the current Spider-Man, Tom Holland. Let's begin. Starting off this list is Spider-Man versus Electro. Now, what happens if you combine a man who feels like a nobody with lots and lots of sparky power? Well, you get a shiny blue guy with visible veins that shoot electricity from his whole body. When Sparky Max got to set foot in the outside world as Electro, like a hungry newborn vampire, he went searching for food but didn't know the extent of his capabilities. So naturally, the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man came to the aid of the people who were being threatened by Electro. I'm glad you're not one of those cops that rides a horse. You gotta love this version of Spider-Man with all his wits, yeah? Even with his round two match with Electro, where he's pushed around from one pole to the other while the nursery rhyme Itsy Bitsy Spider playing, then he goes and says, Shake it off. Is this your bones, your muscles, and your organs? Plus, people are actually starting to forget how smart Peter actually is once the hero gets a sidekick or a computer guy who does the thinking for him. At least with his battle with Electro, he had to come up with a solution on how not to get his webs to burn from the electricity. I don't feel so good. You're alright. I don't, I don't know what's happening. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> Now, who can forget this scene? Certainly, no one. It's still one of the most heartbreaking scenes in the Marvel Universe and of Spider-Man. The young Spider-Man who was just starting to discover his full potential and just being initiated to the Avengers and then suddenly withered away because of the mighty Thanos snap. <laughs> There isn't really much to say about this scene except how painful it was to watch. It can be an example of a person who was cut down in his prime and died with the regrets of not being able to do more with his life. I don't want to go. I don't want to go. Sir, please. Please, I don't want to go. And on Tony's part, feeling guilty for putting a kid into this crazy world and putting his life on the line, and seeing that life wither away in his arms. While Peter pleads that he doesn't want to go, it's undoubtedly one of the most emotional scenes from any superhero movie. Coming in at number 8 is Spider-Man vs Vulture. How do you make the worst impression to your girl's dad? Simple, just stop his evil master plan, engage in a life and death battle on a flying invisible plane, getting him arrested while standing up a dance with his daughter, then forcing his family to move away. Awesome, right? Just kidding. I'll kill you. Anyway, with the newly recruited probational member Spider-Man, he's now sent back to his town to do his normal routine and he feels underestimated. The good thing about this new version of Spider-Man, he is seen as what he truly is. Mr. Parker. Got a sec? Uh, uh, I'm actually at school. No, you're not. Unlike with the previous versions, they were being put into adult situations so people perceived him as an adult when in reality, Peter is only a kid who's lost his parents at a young age and now has these new powers which he needs to keep hidden or else there will be consequences. You have 576 possible web shooter combinations. Mr. Stark really overdid it. Now back home after having his start retreat, he struggles to go back to his previous ways of helping people and just wants to prove to Tony that he's so much more and it eventually leads to him chasing after this guy selling illegal alien weapons. Talk about overestimating yourself, hey? He has his issues with Tony, has his suit taken back of course, eventually realizes he's more than his suit and takes down Vulture, who turns out to be the father of his longtime crush. Breaking free from the symbiote takes the number seven spot. You just know you're in a toxic relationship, don't you? When it changes you into something you and everyone else can no longer realize. Who are you? I don't know. You just feel so much resentment towards another person. Yep, toxic, toxic toxic, definitely toxic. That's exactly what dear old Peter had with his black alien goob. So just like any toxic person in your life, you really do need to strip them from you, by force of course if needed. Just like what Peter did and in the most suited location, that church. <laughs> When he realized that despite the fact that the symbiote was giving him amazing powers and confidence, it was changing him too much and for the worse. So he banged the symbiote away from him and just like any clingy and insecure creature who just went through a breakup, the symbiote attaches itself to the closest person it came in contact with. <laughs> Ah! 
Next up is Spider-Man vs Green Goblin. Now what's a list about Spider-Man if there isn't a spot for the Green Goblin? So here we have his last battle with the mighty Green Dude. Like, do you remember that fire he started when Spidey thought he was saving a kid? It turned out to be the Goblin. <laughs> Or when he came to kidnap Aunt May, making Spider-Man pick between MJ and a bunch of other people. Seriously, which is why it's only right we remember this last fight. <laughs> After everything the Goblin put Spider-Man through, it was natural that Spider-Man's heart would be full of hate towards him. But all that hate turns into confusion and feelings of betrayal when he finds out that the enemy was actually the father of his best friend who knew that he was Spider-Man, and yet he still put the people he loved in danger. You tried to kill. Aunt May, you tried to kill Mary Jane, but not you. This scene had a lot of pain for both people and even for the audience as well. No one can truly forget Norman's last words here. Words from a father who doesn't want to be ruined in the eyes of his son. Oh. The Ferry Rescue comes in at number 5. Some might not even consider this as a Spider-Man scene, considering it was the great Iron Man who did all the saving. Hi Spider-Man. Band practice, was it? But props to Spider-Man for trying to handle this all on his own. He was 98% successful as Karen stated, and not everyone can really blame Peter for wanting to stop Vulture because he could feel in his spidey senses that something terrible was going on, and he did try his best to save the people from the ferry. True, he did act a bit impulsive, but he also acted quickly, which also prevented another Titanic scene. But then again, it was his fault that the incident started. This scene is, as you can imagine, very contradictory. But one thing is certain, everyone loved it when Iron Man came to save the day. Yeah, Iron Man! Also, it was touching to see that Tony himself came to scold Peter like a father. If you even cared, you'd actually be here. Up next is Spider-Man vs Lizard. Of all the creatures Spidey could pick a fight with, it just had to be a lizard, didn't it? Though it's fitting, he's a spider, the other a lizard. It does make sense a lizard would want to kill an itsy bitsy spider. All right, so you don't want to talk? There you go. The sewer scene was so funny when Spider-Man was playing a game while waiting for his enemy to show up. I mean, how chill can you be? While the school fight was just plain disgusting and creepy and making everyone's nightmare come to life, a creepy and yucky creature climbs up from the toilet. It's also the fight where the great Stan Lee makes his cameo appearance. And by the last fight, Spider-Man was seriously beaten up by the giant lizard that looked very similar to Voldemort because of his nose. But the officer hero came to his aid and he was able to stop his evil plan and take him down. Sadly, in the end though, it was his beloved Gwen who paid the price when Officer Hero, her dad, died. And this death haunts Peter for a long, long time. He even breaks up with her by the next movie because of this death and because of his final words to make him promise to keep Gwen out of his crazy world to keep her safe. Leave Gwen. Mysterio vs Spider-Man takes the number 3 spot. Introducing the greatest showman, Mysterio. A one-man show, writer, director and actor. Does he remind you of a tiny chubby dude with spiky hair who goes by the name Buddy aka Syndrome? I'm Syndrome! The guy who created the enemy, plotted the enemy and played the part of the hero to show the world. Anyway, so Spider-Man figured out Mysterio's plan and naturally had to take him down. <laughs> After creating his new suit with Tony's tech, he charged back the battlefield with Happy's help and destroyed the illusion of the creature Mysterio was pretending to take down to look like a hero. After the beating he got because of Mysterio's illusion, he did get his revenge when he took him down. You can't trick me anymore. He finally conquered his fear and rediscovered the hero he was. A part of him had felt that missing after Tony passed away, and by the end of it, people came to know who the man behind the mask was. Busted! Spider-Man's name is Peter Parker. What the f He does all the time. What are you doing? Oh, this is nice. The bond between Peter and Tony is truly an amazing thing to watch. It's like a father-son relationship that they had. If anything, it's kind of your fault that I'm here. 
What did you just say? I take that back. And after Peter turned to dust in the Infinity War movie, then him returning in Endgame, his reunion with Tony was indeed a touching moment for everyone. Holy cow! You will not believe what's been going on. Do you remember when we were in space? This scene was indeed very brief, but also proves that one single hug can brighten up a day. It's also proof of how much closer these two people became. Lordy. Can you even see in these? Yes, yes, I can't, look, I can't. If you remember, there was this other scene from Homecoming when Peter was brought home after being recruited for the mission to stop Captain America. Tony reached for the door behind Peter so he can get out of the car, but Peter thought Tony was trying to give him a hug and said, uh, That's not a hug, I'm just grabbing the door for you. We're not, we're not there yet. And yet now, he was the one who gave Peter a hug. Well, honestly, even the audience felt nice too. A truly touching scene. And finally, at number one, we have the train fight. Guess a superhero franchise will never be truly complete without a train fight. Desperate to rebuild his life work, Dr. Octopus robbed a bank and escalated to him fighting with Spider-Man on a moving train. Doc Ock then started throwing people out of the window and destroying the controls of the train to distract Spider-Man and stop him from pursuing him as he makes his escape. And an iconic scene was created when he did his utmost effort to stop a speeding train by shooting loads of webs on buildings that were passing by on both sides. Using his whole body to hold the train while pulling on the webs to slow the train and eventually stop it like rubber being stretched. He didn't even bother to cover his face after Doc Ock wrecked his mask because the lives of the passengers were much more important than his secret identity. After mustering all his remaining strength to stop the train, he was to fall off the edge when the people pulled him back inside and saw his face and realized that the hero they looked up to and kept saving them was just a kid. This is actually a beautiful scene because both Spider-Man and the people were willing to stand up to save each other. We won't tell nobody. So with that, we've reached the end of our list. What do you think of this one then? Do you think that there are other moments that are more deserving to be on this list? Feel free to give your opinions in the comment section. Please like, share and subscribe to the channel to stay in the loop for all my future uploads. And I'll see you next time on The TV Regent.